taking two concepts and putting them into one. Barilla tacos and sausage. Birria tacos have gained a lot of popularity over the last few years. They're very common at food trucks and a lot of different restaurants now. So what that is, it's a combination of dried chilies, which we're gonna rehydrate, some onions and garlic, and of course our El Jefe taco seasoning and sauce. So we're gonna get started by steeping our chilies over here on the stove top, and then we'll be ready to blend that all together into a beautiful consomme. For our dried chilies today, I have a few ancho chilies, some guajillo chilies, and some chilies de arbol. And all these kind of have different flavor profiles. It's gonna be really good for our chili paste. So I'm just gonna set them in the pot here, because we're gonna steep these to rehydrate them so that they are blendable. I'm gonna cut up some onion and garlic and throw it in there as well. This onion can be a real rough chop because it's all gonna get blended later, so. As long as it's manageable, so don't worry about a small dice or a fine dice or anything like that. All right, and same thing with this garlic. It's gonna all be blended together, so we're not really worried about the size of the chop. I'm gonna take this over to the sink and fill it with water to cover everything in here by just about a half an inch. And then we're gonna bring it to a boil, turn it off, and steep it for about 20 minutes to soften those chilies. While our chilies are steeping, I'm going to season up our chuck roast and to add to those flavors, I'm going to use our El Jefe taco seasoning. This is our honey adobo taco seasoning, which has those chipotle, cumin, honey flavors, which is really gonna add a good body and depth to our flavor. This may be called a taco seasoning, but you can use it in all sorts of different ways. We're using it as a rub today to season our meat before we sear it off. Gonna get all sides. Get that nice and packed in there. We're gonna move over to our pressure cooker, which does have a saute setting, and we're gonna start searing this off. So now we're going to be de-seeding all of our chilies. You can do this before, if that's what you wanna do. You'll just have to dig in there a little harder, but this little trick is after they're steeped, just hold them with the tongs, and all those seeds should come out. I got all the chilies out and I strained out the onions and garlic and put that all in the blender. I did fill it about a cup full of the steeping liquid and now we're gonna blend this up. And there we are, we got a nice paste. Still pretty liquidy, so we will be able to run this through a strainer pretty easily. We are gonna strain this directly into the pressure cooker on top of our seared beef. It's not gonna go right through, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a spatula, and just kinda work it back and forth. Not pushing too much, because you don't wanna force those particles through, but you give it a stir and that'll kinda coax the liquid out of your paste. And what this is doing is just eliminating all those waxy chili fibers that we don't want in the mix. And then after we strained our chilies, we're gonna add about two cups of beef broth just to get it to the top of that chuck roast. To that, we're gonna add three quarter cup of our El Jefe taco sauce. Look how rich and thick that soup is. That's gonna be our consomme. Everything tasted good, so I'm gonna set our pressure cooker to an hour on high pressure, and then after that, we're gonna allow it to naturally release. Okay, our brilla looks awesome at this point. So we have to do a few things. We have to get this meat out and shred it, which is the classic brilla consomme step. And then we also need to chill it because this is going to be added to our sausage, and we don't wanna add anything even remotely hot to our ground meat. Instead of adding water to the sausage, we're gonna be adding this consomme broth, which is just gonna add flavor on top of flavor on top of flavor. But this as well, I need to chill quickly. So I'm gonna take a few ounces of this and throw it in the freezer. I shredded all the beef in my burilla, and I've separated what I'm gonna put into the sausage, which is over here, and then this is what's left over. This is gonna go back into our consomme because this is what we're gonna be using for our dipping later. For right now, these are gonna go into the cooler so we can get a nice chill on them before adding them to our ground beef. We've got our berrillas chilling, so I'm gonna start the grind right away. 
I have some chuck roast, which I have cut into grinder appropriate size pieces. And we're gonna start with a coarse cut. This is a 3 8 And then after that, for our second grind, we're gonna switch to a 3 16 for that. That's going to give us a good texture. The fat should still be separated from the protein for texture and flavor reasons. We're gonna get that going. I had this in the freezer for about 20 minutes to get a really good chill on it. Whenever you're working and making your own ground meat, you want it to be below 40 degrees. Closer to 30 is even better. So this has a nice chill on it. It's a little stiffer than normal, which is just gonna help the grind process. And I'm working with six pounds of ground chuck. There it goes, look at that. Beautiful. Well, sometimes it takes a minute to start, kind of get everything through the auger, which is fine. Just give it a second. As long as you feed at an even pace, the grinder should do all the work and you won't have to work too hard to push it through. Uh, the last little bit, I do grab the stuffer and push that down to make sure everything comes through. All right, that looks like all we're gonna get for the first grind. Now, I'm gonna set this in the fridge while I change out our plate and our knife. Uh, just because, again, we want to keep this as cold as possible so we don't have any smearing. I switched out our plate, and at this point, before our second grind, we're going to season our meat. The reason we want to do that is because it really helps with flavor distribution, and it creates a real even seasoning. And we're going to add two tablespoons of salt. Mix it up. All right, we'll set this back in the grinder. All right, so again, we've switched our plate to the 316, so we're ready for the second grind. And this is still nice and cold, even coming after the second grind, so that's a really good sign that we're gonna be just right. Our shredded meat is nice and cold after being in the freezer for about 10 minutes. We wanna make sure this is really well shredded. If you think of adding things to sausage like jalapenos or high temp cheese, all that is really small pieces, which is still visible in the sausage, but it's not gonna interfere with the texture. Add our shredded beef to our raw ground chuck. One last check for any big clumps, looks like we're okay. And instead of water for this recipe, we are going to be taking the consomme that we chilled in the freezer as well and use that as our liquid. So we're gonna break it apart and see if we can get an even distribution first and then we'll really start working that into the meat. Nice and tacky, not over mixed. All right, we have our 7 8 inch horn set up here. And we're just gonna pack this meat in here as best we can, trying to avoid all air pockets. It's not an exact science, you're gonna have air pockets, it's not the end of the world, we just wanna try and avoid as many as possible. There we go, we're gonna push this down until we just have some of the meat come through our horn. And then we're gonna back off and we're gonna load up our casings. And you can feel the pressure start and you can see it starting to come through the horn here. And right as we get to the end, I'm gonna back off, right about there, back off the pressure so it stops going through the horn and we're gonna load up our casings. So here I have our home pack of natural hog casings. And this is about a 32 to 35 millimeter size. It's not gonna be uniform, but it is gonna be roughly that size. So I found the edge. I'm gonna get some water in there. And that'll kind of help untangle as we go through here. You can see that water. And that's also kind of rinsing out and lubricating that casing from the inside. So once we get it down here, we're also gonna put a little more water as we feed onto the horn. Get a little water on that horn so that'll help it feed a little easier. There we go. There we go. And we're running. There we go. That one went on really nicely. We put a little water on the table so that the sausages don't get stuck and we're ready to crank. When you do this, you're looking for even pressure just to fill that casing. It'll do a lot of the work by itself. And we're gonna stop there. Pull that, we'll give ourselves a tie over here. 
Now when you're linking like this, you can take your time kind of with these pinches. You want to be gentle, let that meat move around in the casing. That way you can help avoid some of those bursts or anything like that that you might encounter. All right, I'm gonna go through one more time with these and kind of get out any of these air pockets. You're just gonna poke them, give them a real gentle squeeze. Note that air should come right out. Alright, so here we have our grilled sausages and we garnish these with the classic Berria style toppings, the diced onion and the chopped cilantro. We have our side of consomme for dipping and we're going to try them. So classic Berria, we're going to take the sausage, which is our taco, and we're going to dip it in that consomme. We're going to take our bite. This turned out really well. The texture is really good with the shredded beef in there. It's not too far off from the texture of the ground beef itself. The flavor is really well combined and even you get the honey, you get the adobo, the chilies, it's all in there. It's just a hint of garlic. Our berilla is just really well rounded and it turned out great. If you want to try this recipe more, check out psseasoning.com. Till next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.